Well, hey, what's up, guys? My name is Ed, and welcome to my channel. Listen, if you like maximizing your personal finance, taking advantage of credit cards to use for free travel, and to maximize the perks and benefits, this is the channel for you. So I just wanna encourage you to, hey, like this video. This will help this content get to as many people as possible, but also subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be updated on all upcoming videos. Listen, is the Chase Sapphire Preferred and the Chase Sapphire Reserve getting a refresh? I think it is. I feel like we've been expecting it for a while and now we have some rumors, some hints directly from Chase's website that kind of says it's about to happen. So let's check it out. So is the Chase Sapphire Preferred and is the Chase Sapphire Reserve getting a refresh? I think so. And I think we have some hints coming straight from Chase. Now I do want to give a shout out to Reddit user, the one with me. He was the first person I saw a post about this on Reddit. He discovered it. So massive shout out to him. But listen, if you can, you can find this information yourself by logging into your account. And if you have the preferred or if you have the reserve, you can see these cardholder agreements for yourself. So I have the preferred, so I'm gonna show you that. But if you go to your Ultimate Rewards portal, you scroll all the way to the bottom to kind of look at the additional links, you can click Rewards Program Agreement, and it brings you to this page with a super fancy user interface to click into these different categories. But the thing you're looking for is this button that says Download Rewards Program Agreement. If you click that, this brings you to the same document that is going around Reddit right now. And again, this is straight from Chase's website. Now, two things I need you to know before we even look at any of these details. One, this document is dated May 7th of 2021. The reserve document is dated May 10th, 2021. So right off the bat, this is a document from Chase that's dated a few months ago. You'd think if this was wrong or if this was fraudulent, you know, the date wouldn't be so far back, but it's talking about this, this document was made in May, so who knows how long it's been on Chase's website, kind of hidden within the Ultimate Rewards portal, but we're now in July. So you'd have to think that there's some validity to this document existing, one, coming straight from Chase's website, but also being dated a few months ago. Uh, the other crazy thing that you see, and this is only in the Chase Sapphire Preferred document, but there are multiple references to the date, August 15th, 2021. And so that kind of says that these changes have to really be in effect before then. So we got a document dated in May, it's talking about changes happening on August 15th. And if you also know, talking about the changes to any cardholder agreements, Chase says they're gonna give you 30 days notice which means that we could be hearing something about these changes being confirmed by Chase by July 15th. So that's in the next week, y'all. I mean, this could come right away. So that's really exciting. There's some refreshes coming, at least I believe there is. I think all of this points to a lot of credibility that something is on the horizon. So let's look at this. Let's look, what are the things they're gonna bring? If they're gonna bring some refreshes, what are they gonna be? We obviously have been thinking this has been coming for a long time with the Chase Freedom Flex coming out and the changes to the Chase Freedom Unlimited. We're looking at these no annual fee cards and saying, okay, you have to do something to differentiate your premium annual fee cards. So what is that gonna be? And are the changes we're seeing in this document potentially it? And are they enough? Do you feel like these are good enough changes to continue to separate the annual fee cards from the no annual fee cards. Now, also, one thing I wanna say before any of this, these documents do not talk at all about any increase to the annual fee. And so I'm going into this kind of assuming there's not gonna be a change, maybe that's hopeful, wishful thinking. If there is any change at all, man, does that really impact any of these positive changes. But let's look at it, let's explore them, and then you can kind of decide for yourself, do you think these changes are good uh, or are they not good if they come with a rise in the annual fee? So 
Very first thing, we're gonna look at the Chase Sapphire Preferred because that's the card I have, that's what I can verify here. Um, you can also find both of these links on Reddit, pretty easy, just go searching for them, you will find them. But let's look, check this out, the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Very first thing it talks about is a $50 annual hotel credit. Um, this is new, so the idea that if you book a hotel accommodations through the Chase Ultimate Rewards portal, you get a $50 credit statement annually. This is one of the things where it talks about that date of August 15th. That is kind of the, the rollover date of when this credit will become available to you year after year. So that's news, that's good. $50 annual hotel credit. Uh, you get 5X back tra on travel purchased through the Chase Travel Portal. This is new, uh, so that's exciting. But if you know that about the Chase Freedom Flex and Chase Freedom Unlimited, that same benefit already exists on those cards with no annual fee. So we're now just kind of getting that added on to the Chase Sapphire Preferred. You got 3X on dining, streaming services, and online grocery, okay? Um, these are all new. We know dining previously on the Chase Sapphire Preferred was 2X, or, or current presently is actually 2X. So you're getting a little bit of a bump there, uh, and then you're also adding on streaming services and online grocery. What does online grocery mean? We don't get a whole lot of detail in the document. Could it also mean things like Instacart? We don't know, so we're gonna have to wait and see. Uh, but you got online grocery, that's excluding Target, Walmart, and other wholesale clubs. The streaming is great, but it's a pretty small category in the grand scheme of things. So yeah, it's nice, but it's not too much of a perk in my opinion. And the dining increase is nice, uh, but there's a lot of other cards also giving you 3X, some other cards giving you 4X, so uh, is what it is. The other things, 2X back on travel, that is the same, that is staying the same on the Chase Sapphire Preferred. 1X back on everything else, that is staying the same. And then another final thing here, it talks about the 10% anniversary points bonus. So this is new, and you know the example they give within this document is that if you have a total spend of 25,000 on purchases made within, with your card during a previous account anniversary year, you'll earn 10% bonus, which would be 2,500 points on your account anniversary. So that's kind of nice, a 10% bonus every single year. That effectively means that these multipliers of you know, 5X on travel through the portal is technically like 5.1X, uh, which makes it 0.1X better than the Chase Freedom Flex or the Chase Freedom Unlimited. So yeah, kind of nice. Uh, the 3X back on dining, streaming services, and the grocery kind of becomes 3.1X, all right? so. Yeah, a nice little bump, given the fact that you get this anniversary bonus, so that's cool. Now, switching over to the Chase Sapphire Reserve. New thing, 10X back on dining, car rentals, and hotels booked through the Chase Travel Portal. So this would be a brand new perk, and pretty nice, 10X back. I mean, that's, that's a great return on these three items. Uh, obviously, going through the Chase Travel Portal for dining is, isn't I don't really do that a lot, but 10x back uh, that's pretty significant. You also have 5x back on airline purchases booked through the Chase Travel Portal. Um, this is also new. You already get 3x back uh, on travel, so the document talks about how this is really just an additional 2x stacked on top of the 3x that you're getting. So this is not an additional 5x on top of the additional 3X, that, that's not the case. It's an additional 2X on top of the three for a total of five. Um, and that's important. Actually, for the 10X back, same thing. You know, When it refers to dining, it's basically saying that's an additional 7X on top of the already 3X that you get on the card. So uh, these numbers are, are what they are, 10X and 5X. It's not an additional 10, an additional five on top of what you're already getting. It's a total of 10X for dining, car and rentals, uh, car rentals and hotels, and 5X on airlines. Then you have some of the things that are already the same. 3X on dining and other travel booked uh, when, you, when you book through an airline directly. 1X back on everything else. The $300 travel credit, all of those things the same, not changing, they're still in the agreement. And then one interesting note about the Chase Sapphire Reserve is that this anniversary points bonus that exists in the preferred document 
is not in the reserve document. So I don't really know what to make of that, um, but it's just not there. So sorry, Chase Sapphire Reserve, you get no bonus. Um, so what do we think? What do we think about this? Again, we have no clue if this is coming with an annual fee increase or not. I'm kind of right now assuming that it's not going to have anything, which if it doesn't, then yeah, sure, this is great. I mean, just any additional benefits you wanna add, great. If there's a credit, hopefully I'll be able to take advantage of it, a $50 hotel credit, let's say. Yeah, that's awesome. I would love to have that available to me, something I didn't have available to me yesterday. That's awesome. If this comes with any annual fee credit increase at all, I don't know if they did anything worth being excited about. Uh, so as of now, it's just rumors, but we could be hearing confirmation within the week if we are to believe any of this information that again, comes straight from Chase's website. So I wanna know what you guys think. Put in the comments below, I'd love to know what you think about these rumored changes. Do you even think they're gonna happen? Do you think the fact that this is on Chase's website, dated for May, says, yeah, this is definitively happening, and what do you think about them? If there is an annual fee increase, does it change your opinion at all? And until next time, I'll see ya.